Sean, how are you? Good afternoon, Gareth. So we're at Reese Evans, which is definitely not an Australian name. No, it's not. <laughs> not, not Australian. It's actually, he was born in Ireland, I learned the other day. Yeah, he was yeah. born in Ireland. Bal Bal yeah, and then went to Wales. studied in Wales, yeah. Yeah. Emigrated here. Yep. I did my you research. You did your research as well. Read the website. But the bottom line is, you're Sam Monk's fent dealer. We are. And Crone dealer. Correct. And you mostly look after him yourself because you're sales director. That's it. All over it, mate. But you have a lot of masses. I'm just standing out here, so we have a lot of masses. Brand new fent. I flick the camera around here. Kabuta, Crone. I see one of Sam's bailers in the distance. Yep, the eight string in the distance. Massey, Fent, Ico, Fent Bailers, Roa Massey tractors. Now, Sam Monk has a load of Fent tractors off you boys. He does. He loves his Fent tractors. We're not saying anything any different than that. He loves this Fent tractor. Yep. I've been collecting caps since I got here. I love me. <laughs> I have a Fenton hat as well. I'm just scared to wear it yet, yeah, you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm scared if I put it on that I start to melt or something. <laughs> <laughs> but no, right. he is he's a pain of them. He likes his John Deere's for certain jobs yep. and he loves his fast tracks for certain jobs. Yep. And I'm just looking around here. There's a lot of red tractors there. There's, there's potential. There's an opportunity, <laughs> maybe. We never know. So the Massey Baylor is exactly the same as the Fent Baylor. That's it. Formulated on the old Lely Welger. Yeah, that legacy product. Yep. And Sam likes, no, Sam has them in Fent colors, obviously. Correct. But he has a few of those. Yep. Kind of all his Baylors are nearly through you, bar one, I think. Yeah, that'd be right. We support him on the Crone yeah. and the um, and the Fent lineup. I think he turned 30 yesterday. And he I think did, he's, boy. He's on the cusp of 30 Fent tractors, which is pretty cool. Is that a New Zealand company? It is, yeah. And they, they, they're specialising in like, well, obviously we can see it all feed there. Feed-out equipment. It's a feed-out. Yep. Yeah, they've Piles. branched into some yeah, some other stuff, but predominantly they're a feed-out um, solution company. Do you sell much? Like, is that, a, is that a big part of what you do? Uh, yeah, clearly, because we're predominantly in a dairy area. Uh, yeah. So, of course, round and square bales, and, of course, pit silage, uh, which is where Sam sits his business in, is that, that bulk silage. Um, you know, yeah, we do a lot of it. It's a really good product for us. The old Citrix Magnum rakes, yeah. What? <laughs> ding, ding, ding. It, they function we'll the other way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if it goes the other way, you're in trouble. Grizzly, Ooh. that's the other one. Yeah. Grizzly. Do you know the bit that scares me about Australia more than even the sizzly boys that do this here? These are spider things. <laughs> Well, worry about the, the spiders aren't the worry, it's the snakes, Gareth. That's what you'd be worried about. Is that what you'd be worried more about, the snakes? Can, well, I've seen two snakes in my time here. And um, I drove over one by accident. Yep, <clears throat> yep, accident. Of and course. the other one, I seen it and I braked hard and I stopped to reverse because I wanted to study it. Yes. But it was gone. They're cool. It yeah. was gone. Yeah. Look, you've acres of space around, so we're literally just walking around one side. Yeah. Yeah, we're an eight acre, the whole facility sits on eight acres. We're about 3,500 square metres of, of undercover facilities between storage shed, workshop, and, um, and our main um, okay. showroom. So it's a big facility. So this is also great, your great plains dealer as well. Yeah, which is supported and brought in the country by Kubota. So it's Kubota, Crone, Great Plains, Kubota Implements. It's a big part of their business. That's a... Hey, that's a very nice bit of kit there. Yeah, nice. Nine metre. Yeah, that is a serious piece of equipment. No doubt about it. And he's be able to, you know, he's pulling a nine metre machine on it, like a, a 7260R. Yeah, I'd say at times it, it would hurt it. Um, it's bound to. Yeah, just for ballasting, probably more so than anything, Gareth, I think. Yeah, it probably needs a bit more weight. But who knows? You never know what. No, if you, if you, if you were, if you were getting <laughs> to supply the tractor, for that job, for that machine, what tractor in your arsenal would you have instead of that John Deere? Oh, um, if I had, if I had my pick, she'd be a 930, no question. Nine, a nine, but would a 930 be okay? Would, you know, what I'm saying is you can obviously, you can sell a 1050, you can sell yep. a 1042, you can sell a 939, 936, yep. but if you were just putting your pick of a tractor in there, you go 930. I would. Yeah. Is that you has convinced Sam that 930s are the best <sighs> He does love his He loves his 930s. Yeah. Something I have noticed, I'm chatting to JCB, and obviously JCB Agriculture, 
I know Sam has a lot of his their loaders and a lot of their tractors. Yep. I think he's one load all. But I think as far as Australia's concerned, tractors and loaders are more popular than maybe a lot of other places I would go to around the world or okay. I've seen around the world. Yep. There's still a big following. And I just see a few a good few of your tractors there with loaders on. Yeah, predominantly again in our area here the most sales we get are in the you know 100 to 140 horsepower bracket that's really the largest selling segment yeah and of course predominantly that's onto dairy and mixed farming i see yeah because they were saying that people that buy their low dolls once they get them they love them yep but that was just they were just saying the market was predominantly tractor yep. and loader so in here's quad bikes over here yep what is this like a Device to help it roll and over? Yeah, it's an Australian um, requirement now to have what is an opera, like an ops, we call it, but it's a it's a safety requirement now because on the, ATVs. Because we'll see in your showroom, you have on, so you have CF, yep. Honda, Honda, yep, and, 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 and Kubota, Kubota yes. yeah, on, on all of those, I'll call it ATV type ATV. things. Uh, there really is only two that are accredited in Australia. So there's the lifeguard there. This is, an, this is a New Zealand design, this it's one. It's called a lifeguard. They call it a lifeguard, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. And the other um, one's called a quad bar. Oh, you can um, see it out there. Yes, yeah. just in the distance, yeah. Well, well, yeah. So Sean, you're sales manager. Yep. What does that mean? Uh, for me, I have a team of five guys. And for me, that's really ordering, forecasting, um, clearly, I still deal with some of the larger clients. I know that you, you deal with Sam directly, mostly. Been a long, long-term relationship. I met him when he was 16 and he <laughs> bought his first tractor then. <laughs> 16. 16. Yeah, amazing. And he's 30 now, so he's really, he's really 14 years in business. And I remember him telling me about being 16 and going out with a baler. And, you know, so yeah. in 14 years, he has grown. And from your perspective, he really runs 30 fence along with four of these kind, kind of bad boys. Yeah, and, and look, he's, um, Crone is clearly um, a big part of his business as well, like with the bail counts that he gets. I think on average he would get anywhere between 60 and 70,000 bales per year uh, in so a good year. This one, for example, isn't his. No. Any idea what way this one's here? Just in for a pre-season. This, this client has an accumulator, which is obviously made by Crone as is well. Oh, this thing. So it goes on behind. Behind, yep. Catches and sets. So this says the daddy. Yeah, that's the big girl. In yep. your opinion as well. Oh, without question. They're a beast. Well, Sam tells me, <laughs> you know, it's not that I have been giving him any jibes about John Deere's or anything, because no, I'm not like that. I can't imagine No, that. but <laughs> he tells me that the reason he loves fence or that fence never break down so are you going to try and tell me this is just done for a pre-season <laughs> <laughs> more than more than a pre-season this one this 933 has uh completed nearly 22,000 hours and has just um had a transmission rebuild now can i ask a genuine question here yep. if you and, and i know you'll be honest with me is that gearbox rebuild number one or two one okay so 22,000 hours and it's getting its first gearbox look. Yep. And I know Sam, he will run that tractor on now when he gets it back for a period of time. Yeah, we would we would hope that have now you, that trans will do another 10. Have you traded in any fence yet? No, he's not he's not sold one or traded one. That's to the, the best of my knowledge. That's the that's the growth then. Yeah, that is. It, particularly in probably what would be his last eight years. Started with a eight two four. But he's gonna have to at some point. Well, I think eventually what he'll do would be to older tractors like this will come as a get out of jail type tractor. Or I don't think he'll move them on, but, but eventually we were, he might. We were up the road in a three tractor spreading on the big Bergman spreaders. Yep. And that's tight work. Yeah, hard They're work. holding a lot of stuff. Yep. And it was a 924, I do believe. To, <laughs> you're going to laugh, it's 22,000 yeah. hours as well. Yeah. And it popped the turbo. Bog Warner. Yep. Single turbo. Yep. $22,000, and that was exactly because I was doing the whole... <laughs> Doesn't break down. <laughs> Doesn't break down. <laughs> but I mean, she, she, she literally, it was a shaft failure inside the turbo, and when you looked in, it was no problem. Yep. Tommy D, obviously it was in the field, it was a service field job. Now, no messing, got the muck spreader, pulled back off the tractor. Yep. 
got it on another tractor, it didn't stop because he needed a little bit of time to source and get the turbo. And that was more an Australian potential bit of an issue. Older tractor, not many guys is that Bob Warner on the shelf. Got yep. one. So we got this turbo, Sean. Tommy D fired it on, checked in her colour, went off. But he told me, he said to me, he said, it's a strange place, this at times. I said, why is this, Tommy? He says, the older they get, the harder they work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And I <laughs> says, this is on the fence. And he says, this tractor will possibly... Because I said, would that not go into your dealership? And he was like, well, our dealership is here, which was six, five and a half hours drive from here is yeah. where the tractor's working. Yeah. So he said, if it was at home, it very possibly would. If it suited or you would maybe sort it. But because we're up here, we have to, we will sort it. Yeah, and they're very capable lads and too. They are. And yeah. he said to me that that tractor may not be home twice in the year. Yeah, don't doubt but it. Sam's, Sam, I don't think Sam's ever had all his gear home at the one time. So it's a 22,000 hours transmission. Yep. I have an 820 at home. What an awesome tractor. Yeah, awesome. It had a transmission now, um, but it was before we got it. But they would have been more common to feel in the smaller ones. I think it's a smaller box, but those bigger ones, they seem to never give any trouble. Yeah, look, but these... I, I think there was a lot of driving done for years in the wrong mood. That would, uh, look, if you're high load in high range, it can yeah. hurt them. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Are they the best or is the red the best? Uh, look, I think it is, it's the application, Gareth, for me. And clearly that's where Sam... For what he asks of his tractors, I think Fent is the best, yes. It's the hours he works, it's the diversity of what he does to, he can put them to pretty much any job. And speed. And speed. To have yeah. a bit of speed. Yeah. And when, you, when you're clocking, when, when, when driving 10, 12 plus hours is a common occurrence to get to work, 5k an hour makes a big difference. Massive difference, yeah. This looks more like a PDA yeah, department. Yeah, into the PDIs. I, I'm going to yep. say something here, right? And it's going to go against my grain a little bit, but we see some masses getting work done, which, yep. is, which is common. Yep. We see a couple of, there's only two fences getting work done. There aren't actually any kabooters in here getting work <laughs> done. Are they actually reasonably reliable? Look, the, no, they're very reliable, no question about that. But to be fair, the M7 is, of course, in its second series in the twos. Uh, M7 151s are the one series, are now into their seconds. So, of course, um, there's not, uh, they're not out there with huge hours in our range. There's clearly a lot of older Kubotas have been in the country a long, long time. But as far yeah. as the M7, it's relatively new. This is a Kubota precision planter, traded. A Kubota precision planter? Yep. Because, of course, they acquired the Cavernalin brand many years ago. So I can't get used to seeing this in orange yet because we are still blessed in red and grey as yep. Cavernalin. Yep. And I see now out front you have a plough sitting. Yep. Cavern I did not think... I haven't seen any ploughs. No. Oh, look, this area does uh, it does do a lot of moldboard ploughs, but not to the level of which you would see them. Ah, because yeah. anything I've seen has been along this strip tilling and all of these things, you know. Yep. So this is... For, for our boys at home, this is a cavern. <laughs> Maze drill. <laughs> yeah, maze drill. We so we're a total staff of 42 currently, and there's about 20 here um, running through the light and the heavy division oh, of the okay, workshop. Yeah. So, yeah, there's a bit on their plate at times. In terms of total sales, can you can you rate them for out of interest? Is it Massey 1, Fent 2, Kabuta 3, or is it...? Uh, look, in terms of percentage, because of the numbers, like clearly Fent... Uh, look, there's been nine Fent go out of here in the last month or about the last month and a half. In terms of overall turnover, Massey would be our core uh, product range. Really, again, dairy farmer market, predominantly larger contractor like Sam. So, of course, they tend to gravitate to the Fent, uh, but Massey would be from 90 horsepower through to 150. The yes, course. so yeah. top volume of. Would you find that you sell more bigger tractors, they would be Fent? And do you find that your more smaller tractor that you would sell would be massive? That's kind of what I'm getting at. And then Kabuta is just kind of an in-between for Co just someone yeah, who needs Yeah, correct. A yeah, correct. And our market isn't really big from 240, yeah. 200 to 240, really. It's, it's a, from a sales volume, it's relatively small. It tends to go to 180, 200, and then pop up. So what I have noticed is that at home, 
there's a lot of dealers there's a lot of dealer strategy in play there's um with an ico i think we call it route 66 i think um john deere's dealer of tomorrow yep. plans and all the rest of yep. it and they're trying to align dealerships and they're trying to do all yeah. of these things yep. and you kind of see i'm not saying it's right but you're seeing kind of separations where fint wants a separate sales and massey in its own place and yep kabuta has done some big moves in the past as well with dealerships making people choose bess and bobs and you know, and I, I'm I'm standing in here, you showing going here. You're rocking it all. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, look, it's it's hard to manage at times, clearly. Um, but the growth of our business since we moved here in 2018 mm -hmm. is quite phenomenal, really. Um, again, we've always had great brands, but you're right. It is a challenge. I think Australia and the distances that we as dealers need to support. Uh, I think that's where Europe has a lot more dealers in. In yeah. closer confines. Oh, oh, very much so. I was in at Sam's. At the end of the day, Crone have an incredible foothold in Sam Monk's yard too when it comes to those big bailers because those are big products. Yep. But obviously, they can look around and go, well, I see one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight, nine <laughs> <laughs> choppers. <laughs> I see I have lost count of more conditioners. Yep. He has a big M as well. We yep. forgot about the big the M. The big M450. But he yep. needs an Irish big M. Yep. He does, an, a, a European spec one. Because his conditions are different. You know, those guys could be standing looking at that. And sometimes it's, it's the old pie. This whole, you know, you need a little bit of the slice of the cake and yep. you keep working and chipping towards it. But Sam is exceptionally loyal to brands. He um, is very. I'll and, give him that. And give credit where credit's due. Obviously, Class have backed up their product really well. I think from a crime perspective and Fent, um, and Kubota Implements, we back them up really well and we're supported really well. So we have obviously a couple of implements there with yep. CF's a big thing, side by side. So this is the other type of like a, a, an assistance to rolling yeah. over. When a quad bike rolls, it has to come on top of you, but if, it, if this can help to, because it's fairly solid there. Yeah, really and that, that design has changed over the years and this is, well, I, would, I would say it's their best version of it. Um, and cl clearly, any time you can make farms safer, um, they need to be doing it, so. And does this see, because I've seen this CF Moto brand at a lot of our local shows, and they seem to be gaining traction. Are they a good old side-by-side? -side? We have a Can-Am, yep. if that helps put it into perspective. Yeah, I don't know, I don't even know if it's any good, really. I just like it. Nah, look, there's we, no doubt. There's we need a petrol because when we're filming and stuff, we need to get up and go. Yep. We're, yeah. we're in close to a machine. A belt drive. you got a belt drive, yeah. can with a bit of grunt. We tried one of these. Um, local Honda dealer fired us one out. It was just, a, a, to me, it was just a safer version of a big quad. If you're going to round up the cows or whatever, agriculture is an aging population. You yeah. have an older person going to do it. It's much easier than swinging the leg out yeah. over. And look, so the, like now they're really drilling home into the safety side. Are these helmets a requirement? They are on ATVs, not necessarily a fully enclosed, but yes, it is on Are they a requirement now. on a side-by-side? -side? Not. I don't think so. Not that I know of. No, no. Same, same with those. I think, I think that's something similar. Yeah, again, the showroom is rather large, probably, in terms of um, comparatives yeah. to other dealerships. But for us, the showroom is, is uh, key to, one of the keys to our business. Into spare parts. So, is this where I come in and go, I broke my baler and I need a lot of parts here. That's it. Yeah, so we, we have five spare parts interpreters, part of this team. Two, yes. that, two that service the, the back of the house or what is the workshop. But clearly, it's a big part of, um, of keeping people going. Obviously, Melbourne is the closest warehouse. You would look at us and go, okay, we're probably overstocked in some respects. But when you're servicing clients oh, such as Sam, yeah. yeah. You've, uh, you've got to have as much kit as you possibly can. Would your um, area change as, you know, would you be like tied in a certain area for Fint? Tied more so with Massey or bigger area with Kabuta or does it, are you all just pretty yeah. much got, just got your own area that you kind of work within your Pre salesman? Yeah, pretty much. Look, you would, you would see it as a service what you sell and that's really, uh, I suppose, our philosophy. You've come through the business, you're now in, you know, sales manager. Yep. Do you love it? I love it, yeah. And look, really lucky, uh, three owners of this business, I'm one of them as well. So for us to get an opportunity 
to have a dealership like this is cool. It's our version of a farm. Did you work in the business before you became a business partner as such or whatever way you want? Yeah, to? just in sales. So I'm nearly 20 years, I'm 20 years this year. So that all, basically that opportunity was there. Yeah, absolutely. And Linton, my old boss, who um, has cool. been an amazing um, supporter. Clearly he's part of our growth here. Without him, we wouldn't have been able to do it. It's been great, it's been a great ride. This is something that I am noticing and it just seems to be a great place for opportunity. But there's only one way it's gonna work. If you are prepared to put your head down yeah. and work, there's, yeah. there's work oh. there and well paid work. I think it's a reward for effort, ultimately. Yeah. And Sam epitomizes that from a, a 16 year old kid bought his first tractor and yeah, he hasn't he stopped in 14 years. But so. some, sometimes at home, it maybe feels for some, some young guys that are trying to get a tractor. You know, it's almost a fairy tale story, Sam's at home. Yeah. There is great opportunity in Australia, and there's so I've met so many young Irish lads that have yeah. even come out, even working to Sam, that they've just came, they've, they've done, they came for a few months, and seven, eight, nine years, years they've yeah. kids, they've families, they've yeah. built a new life here. Yeah. It just seems to be very attractive. Oh, I think it is, absolutely, and look, by all means, any uh, young Irish techs wanna? <laughs> Well, I hear you, you could have an issue there. <laughs> so, so, Sam may Sam fight you for well. them. <laughs> yeah, correct. Ultimately, over the last few years, like all of us in business, we evolve and change. And it's clearly, yeah. he's put really good people around him. He's got great people around him, like we do here. Yeah. And again, the success of most businesses is the people, let's be honest. It is the people, yeah. yeah. And customers. Yeah, oh, absolutely. People yeah. and customers, yeah. yeah. You're only as good as your last sale. And Australia is, is a different beast, as you've yeah. now become acutely aware of the distances and the terrains and, and all that. So Australia is and will continue to be, I suppose, a proving ground in a sense. Well, look, Sean, it's been an absolute pleasure. No, mate, pleasure um, having you. Awesome. Thank you You're very much for showing us around. Anyway, Sean, thank you very much, buddy. Awesome, Cheers. thank you.